Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Andre here with Zenimov.com. Thanks for your patience on the Mark 50 video review. I hope by now all of you already got the Mark 50. Uh, so it's not really big news. What is big news is the accessory set in the background. And it was the main reason for me to put now some effort in to produce this video because I was just not able to push out the content some weeks ago. There was so much project work going on at my office and there's also one other main reason by march 2020 i will move into a new home it's a garden access apartment so the first time in my life i have a garden wow that's quite a thing and the other cool thing is that in the basement i will have a dedicated collection area including in combination with a home theater setup and that's right now requiring a lot of planning conceptual work already in talks with the electrician to wire the whole thing probably because it's in, in the basement so that's the first thing that's being constructed and I just want to be sure that we have all the right spots for the wires and cables all right so that's it for the intro just in case somebody was wondering what I've been up to let's go back to the figure here we have the mark 50 already attached with two accessories from the accessory set and we start out with the box first So on the left side we have the accessory set, on the right side the standalone figure release, the diecast figure. And as you can see the accessory set is almost doubling in terms of the width. If you look at the depth, it's not as extreme, but this is a bit of reasoning why they probably wanted to release these additional accessories in a secondary release. I mean of course it would have been amazing if they would have done like this one ultimate mark 50 release with everything just by day one already put into the box but if you look at the dimensions it would have been a huge huge box and even larger shipper box but yeah then a bit more close up on the art design of the accessory set which is interestingly a bit more uh, 3D layered, it has a bit more structure going on, a bit more reflective layering going on compared to the single release Infinity War versions. Um, yeah, but let's be honest here guys, this is definitely a money grabbing cash grab by, by Hot Toys. This release, having it as a secondary release to the actual figure, is just screaming money making. And right now the Hong Kong price was almost 400 US dollars, EMS shipped of course to Europe and that's outrageous. Now you will see it afterwards in the video view of the actual items. I cannot really justify the price, not by any means. Even at retail price of 250 US dollars, it's still too much. So let's see how this turns out. Unfortunately, this illusion of a nice proper accessory set for your high priced, die-cast shiny Iron Man figure totally breaks down as soon as you get out some of these accessories. I won't spoil it right now but if you look at these pieces with these light blue effects I'm just not digging them. So let's continue with the review. Alright and here we go with the Mark 50 out of the box and have a look at this amazing suit. It's really awesomely crafted much praised release from Hot Dogs already. Uh, probably one of the best constructed and engineered suits that we got. All right, let's go first for the normal accessories that you get with the regular release. So with the Mark 50, you have a limited amount of accessories. So that's the main reason to get the accessory set, just to cover the standard um, kits that you get here with the Mark 50. You have two main weapons, this lobster claw like Weapon for the right arm. It has a dedicated LED feature, nicely sculpted. For the left arm you have a missile pod. Also looking really clean and nicely painted. Different hand sculpts. I definitely like the articulated ones on this set. Look at these organic and really slender fingers. I think it's the first time that these uh, finger sculpts are that tiny and that accurate. Pretty cool. Then you get this flight stabilization piece for the mount on the back of Iron Man. And as a last thing, you got 
a new design or at least a redesigned sculpt of the Mark 40 Sam Rob Downey Jr. head. This time he looks straight, no battle damage and has a bit of a lighter hair color going on. Definitely liking this one too. So let's continue with the accessories of the accessories set. Alright, and here are the accessories of the accessory set in full view. And I can't deny, Hotos definitely knows how to deliver fan service because nobody probably asked for that many accessories because some of them are really in the movie for max one or two seconds. For example, this hand plate here. I will show you this in the movie authenticity part. Also the power mallet, maybe half a second in the movie. A bit more reminiscent are these power ramps or battle ramps. Some of you also remember maybe these feet claws. Also quite a short scene. And then of course this energy blade. Um, then we have the feet rocket thruster that he uses to catch up with the spaceship. Then a really cool piece is the alternate battle damaged face, face plate, as you can see. Nicely sculpted and nicely painted. Then the gauntlet constraint piece in the end fighter Thanos. Two special sculpted hands to use with the shield. So let's have a quick look at the shield. And as you can see they also applied this light blue effect. On the first side it's really, yeah, it's just a bit cheap looking. It has a really clean look so no bad damage going on. Of course it's nanotechnology. But all in all, I'm just not that happy how this looks. Yeah. Alright, so let's cover first um, the movie authenticity part. I will show you some comparison shots with actual movie scenes and then you can decide for yourself it's, if it's worth to shell out like 250 bucks for this release later on. Okay, coming to movie authenticity, let's have first a quick look at the overall suit's design. Zoom out a bit here. So, as you can see, Honda did an amazing job in recreating this more organic looking Iron Man suit design. Personally, I like more the classic look with the armor plates, a bit more uh, robot-y looking. But um, as you can see, this is a perfect recreation and I was really surprised how well Hotdoss pulled this off because in the end you see absolutely no visible gaps, no joints at all, especially here around the shoulder area. It's all perfectly joined together and you still have a lot of flexibility in terms of articulation and posability. In direct comparison with the movie design, I think it's also a perfect match. You see all the colors applied the correct way, all the mini arc reactors are at the right position so for me that's really an ace job by Hot Toys. Now let's switch to face plates. And here we go this is the battle damaged face plate nicely painted and recreated by Hot Toys showing a bit more battle damage than just the clean looking one that you can see here on the right side. It uses the same golden colors but then some more dark reds and of course the blacks for the blast marks and everything and then you see some of these nano uh, particles in there visible on the left side of the helmet. It's probably one of the better accessories in this set but by itself does not justify the overall price tag or deal. Um, I saw recently a nice nice custom on Facebook where somebody really cut out half of the helmet and put a Robert Downey Jr. Um, head sculpt in it. This looked amazing guys. And I mean, it would have been cool if Hot Toys decided to somehow get this final battle look between uh, Iron Man and Thanos in as like a secondary uh, helmet or a head sculpt. That would have been an amazing throw in for, for such a set. But yeah, so at least we have one uh, battle damage piece now for this suit. Alright, next up is the likeness of Robert Downey Jr.'s portrait. Personally, I'm definitely a fan of this version of, of um, his likeness. There's a bit of debate going on about the hairstyle. As you can see in the comparison with the movie, it was 
in some cases this way around, in some cases it was the other way around, so I think both is fine. Personally I understand that they just wanted to profit from the earlier scalps, so let's have in our comparison. Um, this is the Mark 46 sculpt. Uh, you can see it has darker hair and there's some battle damage on the left side. And this is the Mark 47 sculpt where he basically has a bit a view on the left side. So all in all quite cool and then of course if you want to mount some glasses like these from the 47 that's also no problem. Okay let's go for Iron Man's weapon arsenal. On the bottom right corner you always will see if the item is from the accessory set or if it's one from the standard issue release. So what we have here is on his right arm the massive manga style hand blade. It's directly connected to the elbow and as you can see you can put him in a nice flying pose which is actually just recreating the scene from the movie. It's in for about maybe a second, maybe a split second. It's really not that much. I saw that in uh, one of the original trailers of Infinity War it was even more obvious. I think there was even one dedicated trailer for that small scene. Uh, we'll roll it in the picture and picture comparison. But they changed this movie scene a bit. So uh, they dimmed down a bit of the details from the action pieces in the background and stuff. So no, no idea why. Maybe the whole sword had a bit more, a bigger role initially and they just cut it for the final uh, release version. So for the actual paint job of the blade, as you can see, it has this silver paint applied and no battle damage. And then you have some blue translucent clear plastic pieces in there. Overall, um, it's a good, good addition. Probably won't use it because I'm not a big fan of these huge manga styled swords. A bit unfortunate is that because if you have it attached at the elbow, there is no actual rotation at that joint. So basically you're left off with the shoulder rotation and just this kind of articulation. Then unfortunately some of the weapons didn't make it into the figure form. For example in the first battle we have um, Iron Man creating these sentry platforms hovering above the ground collecting energy and then he shoots it directly into the direction of Ebony Maw. I think it's something called like energy displacer unit or something like that. And that's a bit unfortunate, I mean it would have been an amazing accessory that Hot Toys could have included in this set, but uh, there's nothing. So all hope is not lost though, because recently on Facebook I come across um, 3D renders of a um, custom company, they actually want to build this energy displacer unit. So I might link it down below if I find a proper link, so let's all support them and that we can then finally enjoy all the equipment of Iron Man on the Mark 50. So next up is the feet thruster. Um, this is coming from the scene where he basically lifts up and catches the spaceship of Ebony Maw. First you have to remove the lower legs as you can see it has some heavy die cast packs and then just use the right position like this. The line is straight and then give it a firm push, so like this. It's not fully securely in the sockets and you can have a bit of articulation. And yeah, it gives him this, yeah, I call it mer mermaid look. It's a bit wacky. And then that's how it looks on the flight stand. Back thrusters in full action. For me, least important accessory in this set probably because I'm just not displaying my Hot Toys Iron Man in flying poses and if I would do so I would definitely use the flight stabilizer piece. So let's have a bit more close up on the back thruster. So here the thruster in a bit more detail. It has some nice silver paint application, also the red looks good but it's all very clean. Also on the bottom side you have a clear blue maybe a bit metallic blue paint application on the triangle 
thruster piece, but there is no smoke or dirt or anything. It's just a really clean piece. And I still did, do not prefer this look. It's just looking like Iron Mermaid or something like that. So yeah, for me, not really an important accessory. Iron Man is entering the spaceship he uses in his left arm, a micro laser in his right arm. He basically uh, creates a sticky uh, grappling arm or hand from nanoparticles. These are not included in any version of Hot Toys products. Move a bit forward in the movie, you will see that uh, Iron Man uses a rocket to shoot a Star Lord. And at first thought I was pretty sure that this is the left rocket launcher that you receive with the standard issue of the figure. But it is not, it's definitely a different design, I just put the video in for comparison. So actually I could not uh, match the missile launcher that you get for the left side or this cannon for the left arm to an actual movie scene. Maybe it's just from a concept art, at least I found a concept art. So make up your own mind. The cannon or launcher itself is really pretty nicely designed. It has cool paint applications. Um, from what I see on the concept art there should be like a micro arc reactor on top of it but there's no light up feature or anything like that. But it's a cool cool um, weapon piece for the Mark 50. The next weapon is the Lobster Claw. One of the things that you get in the standard Mark 50 release set. It's quite a cool accessory. And he used this to find a bit Drax in the stand of the Guardians. And the cool thing is it has a light up feature. Um, as you can see here, it's directly mounted to the elbow. And in there you have like a translucent blue effect. It's a shame that the button uh, to activate this uh, LED is just beneath everything here in the, in the biceps joint. Below the silver plate is the button, it's quite a tedious job to open that flap and to activate the button. But yeah, other than that, cool accessory and definitely makes up for a nice display together with drags. So then I attached the fly stabilizer unit. Pretty sweet how this turns out, it's a pretty cool look. It's basically a big plastic piece that you put on the back side on top of the battery compartment and Iron Man is I think using this in the first battle scene in New York and then also later on in the fight with Thanos so pretty cool look in my opinion a lot better than this feed rocket thruster be a bit cautious about these parts it's quite delicate and don't move and bend the back part too much in that direction because you it might break. It's a bit delicate here in the lower section. All right, next one is the energy blade that you get also in the accessory set only. Um, not really convinced with this weapon. Looks like from video game, maybe Halo or something like that. I think. This way it's put the right side, you have two dedicated hands to basically attach this on the left or right hand. So yeah, that's probably the least interesting accessory or weapon in the set for my liking. Um, it's just not very well executed. In general you have this, well you have at least a, a faded paint application from a lighter blue into a dark blue, but it's just not up to the usual Hot Toy standards. So, yeah, I think it was also in the movie for about one and a half second where he basically gets up to Thanos with the blade. And would have been cool in this item would have been really a translucent application of clear plastic and then maybe like a light up feature. Then it probably was worth the price. So then here's the shield of Iron Man. Personally, I'm not a big fan of him using shields. I mean, for what reason he has this invincible armor, but I understand it from a director perspective to bring in something new. Of course, it's cool to have then a possibility or an option more to sell toys. Um, unfortunately, the Hot Toys execution of the shield is not really up to the standards. Uh, from a distance, it looks quite nice. I mean, 
it makes up for a nice display option but if you look closer it's just not it's just a bit boring uh, the paint application is really clean uh, there is a gloss red part and the glossy golden part a big light down are these light up imitation uh, areas where this is basically a light blue going into a darker blue color like you have saw on the energy blade weapon i'm just not digging this kind of effect also there is no battle damage at all and i think he uses this um, shield twice in the moving just in the beginning and then later on in the battle with thanos as a display variant you can pose him with the shield in a kneel to down position which is basically there for recreating the scene where he avoids uh, the big purple blast of Thanos and there you can see the actual clamps how you attach the shield to his um, gauntlet area it has some soft padding in the in the inside so you don't scratch the gauntlet but overall I think this is quite a good display option to choose Speaking of shields, by the way, there was an alternative shield, another shield in the movie at the beginning, in the um, direct fight scene with uh, Black Dwarf, where he basically creates a more rounded shield. I'll put it in the picture in picture comparison. This shield, unfortunately, is not included, so that's maybe another thing for a customizer company to add. It reminds me a bit of the Gladiator shield that Thor is using in Fall Ragnarok. So after using the shield he switches immediately to a striking blow with this power mallet that you can see here in full focus. Uh, it's nicely painted and sculpted, has also these blue elements here at the front, no light up features at all, all plastic. Um, because it's also attached to the elbow, like the hand blade, it suffers the same limitations on the articulation. So you cannot really rotate it this way or vertically, you just can bend it outwards and inwards. So this is definitely limiting the whole piece a bit. Uh, probably I won't use it, but it's a nice throw-in and also in the movie for just a split of a second. Also seen in the same moment of the movie, you see the first use of the power clamps on the feet. These are some heavy pieces and this is how it looks in the full view. So basically he grabs in the ground and then uses the stabilization for a powerful smash. Um, personally, I like these clamps. It's a really cool display option. You have quite a good articulation range on the clamps. For example, here the front legs or the front elements can bend. Also, the side elements can bend. But overall, you have to watch out that you don't um, put the clamps too close together because it's nearly impossible to have them sideways in direct, um, in direct line. So just be a bit careful. Clamps themselves are all plastic, but they give a lot of stabilization. And I think overall it's a cool creative add-on. Of course, it makes him more animal-like. I have no clue why uh, Tony decided on doing more uh, like animal imitation stuff. The whole suit looks really a more insectoid or a bug type of design. Um, especially also looking at the faceplate. It's just, as I said, more organic. And a bit more like, I don't know, a bit more alien-like in general. And these claws definitely add to this effect. So slowly but surely we're getting through the remaining accessories. So now we have the battle rams. These are pretty cool. I saw some amazing pictures again from BG Toy Art where he added the thruster effect on the backside with Photoshop just ramming the whole thing into Thanos. Pretty sweet. The detail and scalp is nice on this piece as well. No battle damage or worn parts. It's all pretty clean again, but nicely sculpted. The way it works is you just remove the lower arms and then align the correct piece and switch it directly into the arm socket or elbow socket. And this is perfect together with the, the foot claws, I think. 
makes up for a very dynamic display. And if you look earlier back into the history of Iron Man pieces of Hot Toys, this would have been a single figure by its own. Uh, let's think of, of Striker or the Gamma Suit. They had these arms fixed into position and now we got an additional accessory pack for one suit to add them as a replacement part, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So and the final weapon I want to show you is the Katar and together with the Katar and the shield he basically looks like an Iron Knight. Uh, also a cool look to go, so the Katar is this um, middle long blade that you can see here on his right wrist. It's basically there to be attached on the hand pack here and you also got a replacement part because what you can do is you can um, detach this one and use it as accessory for Thanos to recreate this final smash scene where he basically got um, backstabbed by Thanos, unfortunately. Um, the Qatar itself is all plastic, but nicely golden and red colors applied. So this is how it looks uh, loose of the figure. So you can remove this hand here and there's a peg inside. You have a secondary um, battle damage piece that goes in the same socket like this and this is basically now the accessory for Thanos so let's see how this looks on Thanos so the mean bald guy is here unfortunately he grabbed the Katara from Tony in the final battle scene and used against him as you can see here smashing it right through his torso um, you can get it somehow to work, it's not that easy to have a stable position of both figures but I think it will make up for a cool, cool display. Um, of course Tony's head is not really battle damaged, that would have been an amazing another throw in addition by Hot Toys to go the full route and provide everything that you need to recreate a scene. But yeah, I think it's quite nice to have this display option. So the last item that I want to show you is the gauntlet constraint device that you can actually use for Thanos glove. Let's zoom in a bit first. It's also in the movie for maybe split a second. Tony throws it at uh, Thanos so that he can block further actions of him using the gauntlet. Um, but uh, just another second later he just grabs it off and removes it. The alignment of each finger is a bit difficult especially on the thumb area um, it's slightly magnetic so it's not that it will just fall off but the alignment of the finger is not that easy but yeah it's a nice throw in again quite a fan service of hot toys going the extra mile here to put out some accessories that actually nobody expected to have So as you can see, when I remove it, it's slightly magnetized. Um, here's just the bottom sculpt. Uh, nothing really fancy or special. I mean, it's nicely constructed. Here's a bit of flexibility on finger pieces. But yeah, no light-up feature or anything at all. So before we close the video we have a comparison to do. I took one of the more recent robotic looking suits, it's the Mark 47. Well it's not that far away from the Mark 50 in terms of the numbering. But uh, for me that was one of the um, perfect suits in terms of a robotic looking um, suit design. It's basically a repaint of the Mark 46, also an amazing suit. And now in direct comparison with the Mark 50 you definitely see how the suit design and the arc reactor design and everything has completely changed. Let's have a quick 360 here. Both are beautiful suits, that's for sure. Uh, here for example you see now this gap between the shoulder and the torso area where the Mark 50 is totally joined together. There's no visible gaps at all. Personally, I'm just not a fan of the faceplate style on the Mark 50. This is for me just more appealing on the left side. And another cool detail I want to show you on the hand sculpts. Let's zoom in here. You see these finger sculpts are completely newly shaped. They're really thin compared to the 
more robotic looking ones but still very flexible and durable so that's a pretty neat detail Alright, that's the end of the video review on the Mark 50. My conclusion, the figure itself, the Mark 50 diecast, it's a no-brainer. You have to get that one. It's top-notch quality. Uh, of course, you have to like the actual more organic looking suit design, but besides that, it's a magnificent product by Hot Toys. It lacks a bit in the item accessory department for what we come to the second topic, the conclusion on the accessory set. And here I am definitely feeling a bit lost so uh, if i would have paid about 180 maybe max 200 us dollars then it would be a fine price but at 250 or even right now at hong kong for 400 us dollars including express shipping it's really just an outrageous price and there's no real price value relationship any in there so i can't really recommend it if you're an Iron Man hardcore collector, then it's probably a good, good investment for you since you can do lots of different variations in poses. Uh, but then on the other hand, you come quickly to a point where you probably need to invest into a second Mark 50 and then you doubling the price and with the accessories set together and two figures, you're, you're way over 1000 US dollars. And that's really crazy. In terms of um, investment all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video review see you next time soon and thanks for watching bye bye <laughs>